What up you lab rats? I got a treat for you. We were just taking our walk. Kate in here and I, he's sitting over here. Um, and we finished our walk and I was gonna go on the boat on the lake to show you guys the lake, but they were not allowing me to take Kate in. So my, uh, the wind just got blown out from my sails for that point. So I was just like, ah, okay. So, <laughs> uh, but I got a treat for you today, okay? Um, it's an interview with Brad DeGraw, the Amazon Sherpa. And uh, he's using this name Sherpa because he does all the heavy lifting for you. So what, what Brad is in is called uh, private labeling and uh, producing his own products and selling them through Amazon. All right, so we get into a really good conversation um, and a really good breakdown of what he does and, and break down uh, how he does it and how he picks his products in his market and how he uh, sells them, selling over four dozen products on Amazon and making over a million dollars in revenue for him and his wife. And so, very cool guy. Um, he reached out to me and said, hey, if you need somebody to talk about Amazon, I, I heard about your podcast. And it's crazy because I don't put stuff on, in, uh, on uh, iTunes anymore. I'm mostly on YouTube and on Facebook. So it's great that the, the podcast, which is on iTunes, is still doing its thing. That's really cool. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't really focus on that, on that platform anymore. But he reached out and he said, if you need somebody to talk about Amazon, you know, I'm your guy. And I said, okay. And then I looked him up and I was like, okay, I'm really interested interested now and so uh, this is something I've been wanting to get into a long time talking about products talking about uh, white labeling and talking about uh, creating physical products with the money that you generated in your other business right so I I've been telling you guys that I don't want to do service-based business for too long I don't want to do consulting for too long because that's something where you still have to check in and it's time for dollars right it's a time for dollars sort of thing so I don't want to do that forever because I'm getting old and uh, I'm getting older. I'm not saying I'm getting old. I'm just saying I'm getting older and I want to change the plans on how I make money. So this is something that I think you guys would be interested in. I think it's very interesting. It doesn't require what you would think, which I ask him. Does it require a lot of money up front? It could if you're not smart and if you waste uh, uh, valuable resources and time. Uh, so I think if you spend a lot of time in the research area and really defining your market, and which we'll talk about in this interview, uh, you have a much higher chance of success and not wasting money and not spending too much. So who is? Can't go climbing today. All right. I hope you enjoy this uh, interview, and I'll see you at the end. So I'm here with Brad DeGraw, right? Brad DeGraw, and uh, as I understand it, you're all about the Amazons, and uh, I want to thank you for coming on to the show. You're like the second person to be coming on Get in the Lab in the new format, in the new uh, video format. So Brad, thank you for coming on, and please introduce yourself to the Lab Rat Fan Bam. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm Brad DeGraw. Amazon Sherpa. We live and breathe Amazon. So that's how we make our money and that's how we make our impact in the world. And that's what we'll be talking about today. Cool, cool, cool. So I was super interested when you reached out to me and I was like, ooh, yeah, Amazon. I'm really interested in that. And I, for like a second, I got involved with like niche sites and I really tried to take it off with like Amazon affiliates and stuff like that. So could you maybe lay out for us like they call you the Amazon Sherpa, like why Sherpa? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then maybe lay out for us like the difference between what you do and like the difference between like Amazon affiliates, what something like I would do or the normal Perfect. person would do. Yeah. Yep. So there's three things that we do on Amazon that make our bread. So the first thing is we manufacture products both in the U S and in China to sell on Amazon. So we create products specifically for product launches. Mm. The second thing is we, we do, teaching we do exactly what we do um, and the third thing is we actually have a done for you system so folks who already have a product but they don't want to go through the learning it's too much work or time or effort we'll actually do it for them so that's where the sherpa comes in like i'll carry the bag for you up the mountain. ah gotcha okay so the difference between where we specialize in which would be like seller central or amazon fba where we're putting physical products in amazon's warehouse uh, the associates program is more like an affiliate thing. So if you have great traffic because you have a list of um, pet owners, then you can say, hey, here's a great product. Here's a review about it. I think you should um, order it because of X, Y, Z. It's great. And then that person would make commissions. Gotcha. So on one side, the Amazon affiliates, is you don't have any products under your belt, you're going and piggybacking off other creators, other product makers and saying you have a list and then selling that. 
So that's mm-hmm. Amazon affiliates. And so what you do, you do the other side. You said this word that I've been hearing a little bit, which is FBA. FBA. Yeah. So uh, this is a little technical. It's not too scary. It's fulfillment by Amazon. Okay. So fulfillment means once an order comes in, someone has to take it off a shelf, put it in a box and send it to the customer. So that's the fulfillment portion. Okay. Amazon has warehouses all over the country. And so we actually put our inventory into Amazon's warehouse and then they take care of the orders once they come in. Oh, that's nice. So, oh, so, nice. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about customer service per se, like say if a, a thing gets lost or whatever, they handle that. Exactly. Okay. So if something happens, it's late or delayed, they'll handle 99% of the okay. customer service. So we're going to back up one step and say that now you're, you're in the space of creating products and private labeling, right? That like, that was the big thing that got me interested. Okay. Private labeling. So what does it take to get to that point? I feel like on, on the outsider speak without even talking to you and without even doing any research, I'm going, man, that must take a lot of capital to go to China and be like, can you guys make for me a selfie stick so that I can put my own brand on it? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Well, I'll break it down. So it's simpler. Uh Um, First, you need a market. So a market is a group of people who are passionate about a specific problem, fantasy, and desire. So, for example, we mentioned pet owners. Fantasy, you put that in there. Mm. Well, yeah, we do like sexual wellness. We Mm. do parent products. We do all these things because I'm a dad. Um, I'll spend unreasonable amounts of money for the dad niche to to show that I'm the best dad there is, (laughs) that I'm a better dad than my dad was, that my kid is going to have a better childhood than I had. Mm. And that's a fantasy. No no parent is perfect. Gotcha. But we'll spend money like crazy on it. Right, right. You want to be best parents, yeah. Absolutely. So the first thing is pick a market. Okay, pick a market. I'm going to write stuff down. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. If you're taking notes, underline problem, fantasy, desire, because that's Mm. really what you're building your business on. Love it, love it. All right, so your market first. Okay. Next up, we're going to have to look at the products. What okay. kind of product do you want to sell? And it's a physical product. It's something that fits in a box. Okay. And so there's all kinds of criteria. Smaller is better. Um, anywhere from $20 to even $200 is kind of a sweet spot depending on how much technology is in it. Okay. And then you have to pick your suppliers. Now, half of our manufacturers are in the U.S., the other half overseas. Now, I don't actually travel to see them. Um, I've never been to China you outside don't. of Hong okay. Kong. Okay. No, I don't go to the – it's just more work than it's worth for me. We can maintain fair relationships uh, virtually. Okay, like the Skype? Same way we're just like talking. this? Phone calls work. You have in mind it's opposite sides of the day. So kind of late here is early there the following day. Right. Um, so picking your manufacturers and if you want to stay in the U.S., you can, if you want to use overseas manufacturers, that's an option too. It's just cheaper to go overseas, right? Yeah. For many products, it makes more sense going over there. So, um, one of our products is silicone. It's one piece. It's simple, 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 no moving parts or pieces. It would have taken $4 a unit production cost here versus over there. It's about 20, 30 cents a unit. And so. It, plus the molds. They actually gave us free molds in China. It was custom molding, but they baked it into the price versus here it would have been another ten to twenty thousand dollars. Ah, wow. So, it's it's quite conservative. It's it's like, you know, there's no choice. <laughs> so it, it sometimes it's just the better option over there. And other times it's the better option here. So you just have to do what makes sense according to the product. Okay. According to the product. Cool. Okay. So we've got market product supplier. What's next? Mm -hmm. Next up, you want to create a great Amazon listing. So once you have uh, a product, some inventory, you want to create a great Amazon listing, great images, great copy. So they have to be intriguing, something that pulls people in based on their problems, fantasies, and desires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once you have that, then you can scale up because your business is really about traffic and conversion. And without being too crazy technical, traffic is dancing with the search bots, Mm -hmm. making sure people can find you Mm -hmm. or your products. And then conversion is just making sure that those products are appealing for the people who see them. Right. And you're actually seeing that data of people clicking on that link and maybe getting to the checkout page and seeing what happens there. Exactly. Gotcha. So you, you mentioned a little bit earlier, private label. Here's the secret. Here's one of our strategies that we do that's different than anyone else. Uh Uh-huh. You do this, you can win the game. 
So it's not about making the same thing as everyone else and putting your logo on it. Actually make it a little bit better. On Amazon, when you're doing your product research, you can read the one, two, and three-star reviews. Mm -hmm. And now you can find out people's missed expectations. Once you know what people wanted but they didn't get, now you can make it a little better. Maybe it's the packaging or maybe it's a feature of the product or the material it's made out of or the quality of materials. Mm -hmm. And you make it a little better. And that's the key. That is very interesting because there is this product that came out called Rough It. You've heard of that one, right? Rough It. Which one's that? It's a front-facing dog backpack, right? <laughs> so okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Right, it's a front-facing dog backpack. I was like, oh my god, I love that. I want to do that. And then you go there, and then it's really expensive. It's like one thirty for a dog backpack. And I'm like, dude, I love my dog, but maybe not that much. And so another guy comes in, and he's called Canine Sports Sack. So K9 mm-hmm. Sports X, like exact same thing, like looks better. Maybe it's even made better and it's way cheaper. It's like mm-hmm. six, it's like 50 bucks or something like that. And so I feel like that's how he kind of was able to fill that gap. And that's exactly what you're talking about is seeing where that product fell off and just filling the gap and coming in there and making it, it, doing it one up, right? Private exactly. label on. Yeah. When you do that, you're going to have a long-term business rather than chasing the next trend. Mm. You can actually have something that's long-term and, and proprietary, something that you can scale and sell. This is awesome because now you can draft behind all of the products that like did all the research. They did all this. They got their market. And then you just come in and be like, I do it one up better. <laughs> that's it. That's exactly it. Uh, because there's no harm in, in being second to market. It's okay. If you can be first, that's first. That's fine. But sometimes it costs more money. It's more risk. Yep. Find out where people are already spending their money and make it a little better. And they'll mm. tell you. That's true. That's true. And and it goes back to that saying, right, where it's like um, it doesn't really matter who was first. It, it matters who did it better. Yes. Right. That's it. Okay. Got it. Okay. So that's super dope. Now, still, I'm still on my question where it's like, does it What's the capital involved in doing something yes. like this? So wh- okay. how much it was for, for you? Like you don't have to give us hard, hard numbers, but just like give us ballpark. Oh, no, I'll go there. So Sweet. my first product was a supplement. Okay. So I teamed up with someone else who had some insurance to cover product liability. Mm-hmm. And it was a magic pill called Garcinia Cambogia. Mm-hmm. Dr. Oz made this a, a magic you know, herbal supplement. And my cost was about $5 per unit. And the minimum order per per bottle. Okay. And my minimum order was 96 units. So Mm. round it to 100 for easy math. I'm in this thing for 500 bucks. Dude, that's not bad. That's nothing to start a business. (laughs) Yeah, that's nothing. That was awesome. That's awesome, Um, yeah. So half the SKUs I've ever started, half the products I've ever launched have been under $1,000. Soup to nuts. Dude. So it is something that takes some money. That's, That's true. It takes some money, but it's not a lot of money. I'm thinking a lot. Yeah. Well, you can go big and you can go expensive, Yeah. but there's no need to. You can start plenty of brands, plenty of products for under five grand. Okay. So that's where we tell people, if you have five grand, you should think about doing five products, spread out your risk, do a a dog product, a baby product, spread it out a little bit. Okay. Okay. I love that. So I guess the real question is, where is the work? Because I think it's easy to come, you know, come up with 500, like a grand or whatever. But where's the real work? Is it the, I feel like it's the research. Well, it's, if you spend more time in your research, if you nail your market, yeah, then you're set. If you nail that one, you can mess up just about everything else okay. and be fine. But if you miss that, if you make what we call a ketchup popsicle, something that nobody really <laughs> wants or there's no need for it in the world, uh-huh. then everything else set right won't help you you'll still drown and it's really hard to make that mistake right because you're just like if you if you didn't even do any research well spend a little bit of time in the research in fact if you don't know what to do spend more time researching know your market and once you know your market then the products will start raining down out of the sky because you're in tune with them you'll know hey there's there's backpacks where you carry your dog okay (laughs) there's a forward one there's a backward one there's one for motorcycles and bicycles and and hiking and rock climbing and all this other stuff that's great so if you know your market then picking the product is easy Okay. Um, finding your okay. supplier is there's a little bit that you have to do right, but not much. You have to ask them three very specific questions on the very first conversation. Okay. What are those? 
Oh yeah. So the first, <laughs> the first time you're, you're talking to them for the first time and you have to get to the right person. So you just say, maybe you can put me in the right direction. And okay. finally you'll get to someone in the sales department. You say, um, I have three questions and then I'll let you go. You're very busy. So am I, um, what, how do I pay you? How do you guys like to get paid? And for a salesperson, they're, they're like, doing yeah. the happy day. They're <laughs> feeling it. They're like, okay, this guy wants to put money in my pocket. I'll right. take two minutes and talk to him. Yeah. All right. So they'll tell you, hey, you can wire the funds. You can do American Express, whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's the first thing. And that gets them framed up. They, they have the right energy for the conversation. The next one is from the time I give you money to the time you're ready to ship the product, what is your turnaround time or lead time or manufacturing time? It's all the same thing. Mm. But how long are we talking between money and some product? Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is what's a reasonable first order? So you're, it could be called the first order, sample order. Sometimes they say the MOQ, which is the minimum order quantity. Mm -hmm. And it could also be the sample order. Sample order. So if they say something like 50,000 pieces, you, you laugh and say, okay, we'll get there, but this is our first date. Yeah. You know, I want to make sure that <laughs> you know we can jam to the same groove. Yeah. Um, you know, how about 500 pieces? And as we prove our market, as we nail – the, the labeling and everything, then we can move up to a thousand and two thousand and five thousand and so on. Gotcha. Cool. So during this time, when you're asking these questions, what are some like red flags that maybe you've come across where like in the, in the language that you've been hearing where it's like, mm, should I be dealing with this person? Should I cut it off right now? Or should I dive a little deeper? I love this. You're going to build relationships with these folks. Yeah. So it's not just on one transaction. You're not going to make all of your money. So the first thing is I want to make sure that these are people who can figure things out. They need to be problem solvers. Mm -hmm. And after that, they need to get things done. So if they tell me it's a two week turnaround and yep. at the end of three weeks, I'm chasing them down and they're not returning phone calls and they haven't shipped anything. That's a problem. So if the story is inconsistent or if the actions don't match the words, that's a problem for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And their whole job is to make our lives easier. We're giving them money for them to do the thing they're on the planet to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So after these three questions and then you get your supplier and you nail it down and you, you get a good relationship with them, uh, mm -hmm. the next thing is to, what did I write down here? Um, the Amazon listing. So... Nope. This this comes into question like uh, product shots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, what do you find is like the most thing that people miss? Because I feel like it that's easy, but I don't know. Well, the novice mistake is to use the manufacturer's pictures or to use your iPhone. Okay. You know, people are going to pay a premium price for the product. So let's go ahead and we, we'll have a 3D rendering made. We'll have a professional photographer take pictures of it. We want this to be... Excellent. Not just the product um, on a green screen, but we want to have like a lifestyle image. If it's a drink, show someone drinking it. If it's clothing, have someone, you know, lifestyle. doing the, the activities. So we call those lifestyle images. Uh -huh. Make it intriguing as, as much as possible because we're selling the problem, fantasy and desire, not the item. Gotcha. And are you guys doing any video marketing where it's like, yeah, you got the image on on in, on uh, Amazon and stuff like that. But when I went when I went to go research this canine backpack, I was like, where are the videos? Like, I want to see somebody normal wearing this mm -hmm. thing, right? Not yeah. yeah. Depending on what the product is, videos can be huge. Yeah. Um, and all the social media platforms. So sometimes it's videos, sometimes it's images. There's a brand called um, Frank Body, and this it's a coffee scrub. So smooth your skin with coffee grounds. And they went from nothing to eight figures in less than two years wow. through Instagram. Wow. So yeah, uh, hit all the media channels, whether it's video, whether it's everything, hit everything. And anywhere you can connect to that problem, fantasy, and desire. And like you said, make it real. Mm, gotcha. So I have a question. Your first product was a supplement. Are you still doing that now? And how many products do you have out there? Um, we're no longer doing the Garcinia. That was a trend. It came, it went. Um, it's still selling, but it's the heyday is gone. Ah. Um, we do many other products. We're no longer in the, the weight loss supplement market. We have probably around four dozen SKUs right now. Four dozen SKUs, as so in products. Four dozen products, yeah. Okay, wow. So, yeah, we're, 
we're jamming. You're jamming. We're, and, you're and jamming really good. <laughs> yeah, we're always growing. That's awesome, man. Congrats. So how do you pick your markets? How do you decide? There's a lot of industry out there. Okay, fitness. Okay, coffee. Okay, uh, dogs, right? So how do you pick it? Is it based on passion because you're going to be writing this stuff? Or is it just based on research? We do the research. Um, okay. I sell some products for markets that I'm not naturally part of. So research is a big component. And okay. especially if anyone else is out there looking at a, a market that maybe they don't directly relate to, let the data guide you. Let the data and if guide you. by some coincidence you're already part of that market, it's even better. Mm. Um, Google Trends is wonderful. So you can type in weight loss, Garcinia, weight loss supplements, weight loss recipes, and you can find out what are people into. And is it a linear trend? Is it a cyclical trend? So Google's great. Um, there's some great keyword tools. Amazon itself is great. You can type in your, your ideas for keywords and the products. Um, Amazon actually gives you a sales rank. So the lower the number, the better seller it is. Uh -huh. So you can look at what the competition is doing. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. So then I guess my question is, how do you research? What are the basic, if you could break it down in your sequencing, like, okay, this is what I do first. This is what I do second. This is what I do last. So it brings me to mm -hmm. this, you know? Yeah. So first I want to think, what are some product opportunities based on market approach? Finding the market first is great. So if I have no clue and I want to start from scratch, uh -huh. I can walk through the magazine aisle of a store because normally magazines are based on advertising. Mm -hmm. So they have to be able to sell ads to have people buy products. And the more magazines are focused on one specific topic or genre, the better that market is. So uh -huh. it can be guns, it can be cars, it can be parenting, it can be weddings, it can be anything. So if you have no idea and you don't even have a computer, you can just walk through the magazine <laughs> section and start picking and, and sectioning it off. So that's one. If you have no tools, that's no cool, resources man. at all, I like start that. with that. Yeah. And flip through and see how many ads they are. See if they're big ads, multi-page ads, um, small ads. Okay. And start checking that out. And you can also see the products there because okay. magazines. That's cool. You, yeah. You've probably bought a few health and beauty magazines, right? Right. How about, how about, okay, I'll give you one because I'm already in this industry. My husband mm -hmm. is a wedding photographer. So weddings, there's so many magazines on weddings, right? Mm -hmm. So how would, okay, so we're going, we're going to go weddings. And what's mm -hmm. the next step after that when you break down the research? All right. So you pick your weddings. Now you have to decide, are you going after the bride or the groom? Bride um, for sure. It's going to be the bride because she's making the decisions for the groom, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> so, but it's important to know who so that you can know why. Okay. Why is everything? Why are they spending their life savings right now for this one day event. Right. Um, and it's because it's a fantasy. a fantasy. This is the best mm -hmm. day of my life. And right. I'm going to set up the, all of my dreams are going to come true on this day. Right. Not yeah. exactly. Not true, really. but let the fantasy, <laughs> let the fantasy live. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to start looking at where do people spend money? Okay. And so we can even type in Google wedding and it'll give us, uh, some trends for wedding, wedding photography, mm -hmm. um, wedding event, wedding attire. Mm -hmm. And so, if it were me, you don't want to sell maybe wedding dresses. That's people are going to buy one and they're done. Yeah. But I would think more like the gift bags. There's right. so many party favors and wedding items. That's fantastic that aren't optimized right now. Okay. So I would think about the, the gifts, um, coordinating, uh, event planners, not the person, but maybe a, a schedule, a guide okay. would be amazing. Um, ah, uh, let's see. What are some other pieces that people buy at weddings there's just so many products the little just, things like the little knife and and fork thingy to serve the, the cake yeah the tools and the cake toppers the cake there's toppers, so many yeah. things and so i would just type in in amazon wedding and you can hit the space bar wedding and see what happens in the autocomplete right okay. and they'll tell you what's trending there and same with google and even youtube youtube's great wedding products and see what happens gotcha um, awesome, you can use awesome, all awesome. the social media for that. Gotcha. Okay, so uh, now I want to switch to systemizing because obviously there's a lot of work mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of sequencing. So what's your favorite way or your go-to way to systemize all of these things? I mean, if you have uh, four dozen products, then you obviously have a system and you have some sort of automation in play to where you still have time for your family, you still have time for you. Yes. How do you systemize? So we use something called Asana. 
And Asana is like project management. Oh, I know Asana, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So we just put our tasks in there and everything's rinse and repeat. So we have a master project template that we use. Okay. And then every time we add in another brand or another product, we just duplicate the template. And so I have a team that's based out of the Philippines. They're amazing. Uh -huh. And they go in and we assign their roles to them. Actually, they assign their roles to themselves. <laughs> and as soon as anything's done, they, they put a check mark. I get an email update. Or if they need any help, they can put a note in there. And then we just have daily meetings. Yeah. And it's important. Oops. I don't do the day-to-day -day operations, but I want to know. I want to keep in touch with people who run our company. Day-to-day -day meetings on Asana. Yep. So like so, text, like chat. Well, Asana will keep us in track of what's done and what's not done. And then we'll just jump on Skype. So, I mean, same way we're kind of face to face and we'll just jump through. Hey, do you need anything? What can I give you? Oh, you need a link for that? Here's a link. Or you need some money to buy a new software? Great. My wife, Emma, runs all the money side of things and uh -huh. she sends people money and bonuses and everything. Awesome. Okay, cool. So if I'm first starting out and I want to start doing this like next week <laughs> mm -hmm. and I'm already busy and crap like that, sh do you recommend um, getting a team together or is this very possible to do solo? Keep your expenses low. Start solo. Okay. Like I, I actually started on Amazon like four years ago with a hundred bucks and a Wi-Fi connection. You don't need all the tools and the expensive crazy distractions. Uh -huh. You just need to hustle. Uh, Make up your hustle. mind you're going to be successful and then start plotting the course. So, okay, I need five products by the end of the year because here's the truth. No one's going to tell you this, but out of five products, one is going to be a rock star. Mm. One is going to be a total dud. And then about three out of five, they're going to be, okay, base hits, doubles. Uh, so you want to do this multiple times. It's a bell curve, yeah. Everyone talks oh. about the 20%, 80-20 on the top uh -huh. side, but it actually works the other side. It's a bell curve. Uh -huh. So 20% of the time, it'll just – it'll fall flat. Maybe mm -hmm. the market changed. Like Garcinia, we don't do it now because it's a flooded market, mm -hmm. and it's it's just not the healthy market that it used to be. So things sometimes change. Okay. So you want to be able to, to plan this in repetition. Put most of your money into things that are going to make you money, which is product. Gotcha. Yeah, because you could just sell like this while you're sleeping. Yes. 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 Gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make this switch over and I've got two friends telling me, hey, where's your product that you can just make money yes. while you sleep? And I'm like, OK, so last question, OK, as we kind of wrap up, we're at 24 minutes. Um, how is this? You, you have that other side where you let people um, know how to do it. Like, for example, you're obviously promoting a personal brand at this point because you're coming on and doing interviews and stuff like this and exposing what you do. And I so appreciate that, by the way. Um, how has this impacted your your personal brand? Um, yeah, it's just become bigger and better. Um, okay. the more I give, the yeah. more I get, it just seems to be piling and raining opportunities. Um, for and me, folks, can I ask oh, really ahead. quick, do you, yeah. is your name attached to each and one, every one of these, these products or no, no. like they don't like when they buy a product, they don't know that Brad DeGraw is on the other side. No, no. In fact, they never do um, because each product, each brand has its own identity. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's products based for women and it wouldn't make sense to, to target a male as the spokesperson. Right. So it, the brand can be unique to that own brand. Okay. Uh, my name's never on the product. Gotcha. So the more I give more information, the more opportunities come back. Um, just see. this morning, someone offered to sell me their um, the cat product business, uh -huh. and it's it's amazing. Depending on how the numbers lie, we'll we'll probably do a deal together. Gotcha. And the more information I give out, the more opportunity comes back. That's really what it is, right? I think yes. I think that's what a lot of people kind of fear too, because they go, "I have this idea, but let me just hoard it and not tell you how I did it, and not tell you how Amazon works." Mm -hmm. Right. And they want to keep it to themselves. Well, and here's the thing. Teach people to fish and they'll fish. But if you give someone a fish, if you say, oh, you should go out and make dog backpacks, mm -hmm. then everyone's going to go out and make dog packs and no one's going to make money. But if mm -hmm. you say, here's the process of the logic and how we got there, then everyone can make the thing that makes the most sense to them. And unique products and innovation. And it's unique. And they're yeah. going to have their own idea and perspective that exactly. I never could have come up with. Exactly. That's why I don't believe in competition, really, because like whoever wants to follow you, Brad, is going to follow you for you. 
because mm-hmm. of how you deliver the content and just, you know, your personality and stuff and, and vice versa for me. So I, I really appreciate you reinforcing that idea. That's something I teach in the School of Video Marketing. So um, cool. Thank you so much, Brad. That was incredible. Thank you for sharing that. I think uh, I got you got my gears turning. Um, so what are you what are you pushing right now? What are you promoting right now? What can the lab rats go see and uh, support you with? You know, our big project right now is we've teamed up, teamed up with Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad team. Right. And we're putting together a course that's going to be launching in the next month. Cool. So a lot of great free tools and resources and great information there. So you can just sign up for uh, richdad.com's email list or just follow us. It's amazonsherpa.com. Either way, that's the best way to stay plugged in. Awesome. We'll put that link in the description of this episode and you guys can go visit Brad. And uh, we'll also, where can we, where can we find you on the social medias? Um, Facebook is probably the, um, it never closes. I'm always on there. So yeah, just reach out. If you guys have um, an issue where you're stuck, reach out to me. I'd be glad to schedule some time. We'll get you unstuck. Or if you're already rolling and trying to get to the next level, just connect with me there and I'll give you some time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate your time. And Lab Rats, please thank him in the comments. Uh, I'm, I'm, my mind's blown. Thank you so much. This was super, super, super cool. You rock. All right. Cool. All right. What up, guys? I hope you enjoyed that interview with Brad DeGraw. Um, all of these show notes will be uh, listed in a blog post. Blog post. <laughs> blog post. Uh, in the description so you could check that out like I said I'm very serious about getting into products and so I'm gonna be talking to Brad some more um, and his wife they're a really cool team together and I just asked his wife I said uh, because this is something that we were interested in and I want to read to you guys the thing that his wife wrote me and I hope it's okay that she's letting me share this I think she is because why not this is really great great news okay okay so Kevin and I were talking about this, and this is something that we want to get into together um, because he's probably going to have more capital to to put up front if we need to, right, for products and stuff. And so he said, "What does this do to their relationship?" He asked, um, and I said, "I could ask her, you know, you know, what, what's the workflow like? Because obviously we're already uh, pretty burdened with our own work. Like, what is that going to do to us in our relationship?" So I love that Kevin was the one who brought that up first. He said, "Is this gonna..." you know, be stressful on our relationship. And this is what, this is what Brad's wife said, okay? As for relationship and work, it's awesome. Brad and I started working together before our relationship budded. We dream together, hustle together, and have awesome sex daily. I got lucky and was ready to be a queen at the time he needed one. It's not easy, but it's always epic. (laughs) My advice is to create ground rules and stick to them until you need to modify the rules. Hell yeah, that sounds fucking awesome. Okay, so I was like, yeah, sign me up. Okay, so. Um, obviously, uh, I love to be in contact with other couples who hustle together and dream together and have awesome sex daily. Uh, but otherwise, I think I'm really excited about this. Um, the upfront investment to get started in this stuff is, like you guys heard with Brad, is is not that big, you know? And so if you play your cards right and you do most of the, the leg work and the heavy lifting in the research, you probably don't have to be spending tons of cash. Um, But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy that episode. Good things. Uh, Thank you for hanging out. If you have somebody who's like, who you think I should interview, um, please connect me with them. I think this is really cool. So I I stopped doing interviews a long time ago when when my show was an interview show when I was first starting out in podcasting. But now um, people are reaching out to me and they want to be interviewed. And so I think that's a better... um, and then I could kind of filter it because that's a that's a better way of going about doing interviews on the show. Um, they're kind of one off. Like if it if it lines up, if it's in alignment with what I'm, you know, if I'm interested in it and something that I think you guys would be interested in, then I think it's a good deal. But it, it's not going to be this thing where it's just like try to get an, every, an interview every week. Um, there's too much of that going on. So um, I want to bring you guys, keep bringing you guys good you know, valuable content, um, stuff that makes sense. And obviously it's got to make sense for me. So, um, yeah, good thing. So Kaden has already gone to sleep. We couldn't go in the boat today. Sorry about that. Um, I'm thinking about going into the spa, but now I'm thinking not because it's already 930 and I think it's time to, it's hustle time. All right. So good things guys. I will see you in the next video. Once again, my name is Meg reminding you to get in the lab. We'll see you.